What's up ladies and gentlemen, Ken here with another video from the You Slip We Grip YouTube channel. This channel showcases my nightly towing encounters, whether it's handicapped cheaters or vehicles parked illegally. All the content you see on my channel is 100% real. If you like towing content or you just like seeing handicapped cheaters get towed, then please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell as well. The first vehicle we are starting off with today is none other than a handicapped cheater. This is the ultimate parking sin. This person has no handicap permit. This hits home for me as I have several friends who are disabled. They're in wheelchairs and they need these spaces to go about their daily lives. So let's jump right into the video. All right, you so bigger family, we got the ultimate sin right here. We have this handicap spot cheater. No handicap permit. I'm gonna take my pictures. I think I might be able to just get away with picking them from the back and getting out of here. But let's get to it. It's this Jeep right here on the left. If I'm not mistaken, I can feel the heat coming off the engine. I mean, parked very recently, so a chance it might come out. I'm going to uh, already turn my lights off. And yeah, we're going to try and get this done quick. And cap cheaters are the worst. So right now I'm taking pictures of the vehicle. I'm going to do a full 360 around the vehicle, taking pictures of the vehicle in violation in the handicap spot with no handicap placard visible on the dash or hanging anywhere in the vehicle. I'm also going to take pictures of any damage on the vehicle, any scratches, anything along the sides. That way when they come to pick up their vehicle, if they try to claim any of those that was uh, already there, we can show them the pictures and avoid any litigation or any hassle. This thing. Let's uh, just gonna put down our gun and we'll try and pick them up and get out of here. Hopefully, we can just pick them up and roll on out of here. But I think we might have to dolly it, so we do have to dolly it. We're gonna have to pull them out of the space so he's right up against the curb. I was actually mistaken about his engine, too. It's not. Super warm. I thought it was. It wasn't his. I touched his. Because of the way he's like right up against the curb. That's it. So because I picked the vehicle up by the rear, the front steering, there's nothing holding it. The steering wheel is not locked. So you can see the Jeep starts to turn slightly. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take the, the turn here shortly to uh, head towards the exit. And the steering wheel is going to start turning very sharply. And what will end up happening is the vehicle I'm towing will be almost at a 90 degree angle to my tow truck if I were to keep going. But once you recognize that that's happening, what you want to do is stop immediately, put the vehicle down, then pick it up by the front and just throw dollies on the back. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you'll hear you'll see that here shortly.
when steering wheels do that, man. The steering wheel didn't lock, so it basically turned all the way the wrong direction on me. All right, so now that we got the vehicle picked up by the front, we're gonna hop out, throw the dollies on, and then we'll be good to go. I would have uh, just dollied him where he was, but he was in a real crappy spot there against the curb. All right, you Subbiger family. So this next one here is also going to be a handicap cheater. This one's going to be a Ford F-150 pickup truck. They also pulled into the handicap spot. So all I have to do is pick them up by the back and I'm gone. And this is an example of just how quickly your vehicle can be towed in the right conditions. You'll see shortly. So unlike the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the steering wheel on that Ford actually locked. So I was able to tow it back to the lot without having to throw on dollies or do anything special. So that handicap cheater bit the dust. So the next video we're going to hop into is going to be a Ford Explorer that is parked in the fire lane. Uh, this particular vehicle... Um, when I went to go take my pictures, I felt the engine. It was really hot, meaning they had just parked, so there's a good chance that they're going to come outside. Um, when I go to tow the vehicle, it really made no sense to me either because there was easily 30, 40 spots, not even 100 feet away that they could have parked in. So when people do stuff like this, it really blows my mind. The curb is yellow on every single side of their vehicle, the left, the right, and the front. There's signs everywhere. There's really no excuse for doing what they're doing. If a fire truck pulled in there, they would not be able to get by them. So we're going to hop into that one now. This one's an interesting one. You guys are going to like this.
So because this Ford Explorer is all-wheel drive, I have to throw on the dollies. So this part of the video, I'm going to fast forward through so you guys don't have to watch all the boring stuff. Right towards the end of me putting on the dollies and pulling off, I notice a light come on in the house. And that's when the video will go back to full speed. So watch what happens. Alright, so keep a close look at the front of the house. You'll notice a light comes on right as I'm putting down the dolly bar to put the dolly on. So during this tow, I didn't initially realize that their light had come on. Uh, I wasn't sure. I, I saw it out the corner of my eye, but I wasn't sure if it was already on or not. So it wasn't until I went to put on the straps, which you just saw. I said, oh, crap, the light came on. So I went to go get in my truck and just pull around the corner. So if they come out, they have to pay full price versus being on the property. So it wasn't until I went back and watched the video. You'll see here momentarily. The guy actually came out of his house right as I was pulling away. So the timing here for me was perfect. So even though the owner of that Ford Explorer just barely missed me out front of his house, he does catch up to me right as I'm about to pull out onto the main road. You'll see here. What's up? You parked in a fire lane. I have a problem. I, I, I have to leave. This is the... This is the You're this parked thing. in a fire lane. You can pay for it now or you can pay for it at the lot? I'll pay right now. All right, I'm going to pull right here. Okay, let me go and get it, my, my wallet. Are you paying card or cash? I'm going to get it, my, my wallet. The reason I asked him if he was paying card or cash is because normally if they're paying by card, I'll just tell them to go pick up their vehicle at the lot. We have no obligation to stop for people to let them pay. It's actually, we're not really supposed to do it, but if we're right outside the property, we can do it. We have to call the office. They have to run the card. Uh, we have to text them a receipt. And so it's just a hassle. It takes a lot of time. So I usually, if they're paying cash, it's really quick and easy. If they're paying card, I usually just tell them to pick it up at the lot. But this guy was a little pissed off so i was just being nice to him and let him uh run his card right then so i could drop his car and head to the next one all right and last but not least we have this hyundai that was parked here in the fire lane this is towards the end of my shift as you can see the sun's coming up uh this one was called in by the office meaning the office called me and told me what property this vehicle was at it was called in by the property management meaning somebody Either a resident or a property manager lives on site, saw the vehicle, and called us to let us know that the vehicle had been parked there all night in the fire lane. So you'll see here shortly when I pulled up at the property, the vehicle is still there, and we're going to go ahead and tow it. Like a red light. Yeah, that dude's 100% in the fire lane. Let's get his ass. <laughs>
So the office called me probably about an hour ago and told me about this car. Said that the property management called in and said this vehicle has been here all night. And they're parked directly in the fire lane. So we're gonna grab them. Should just pick them up from the front and be gone. So let's do this quickly. So I hop out here to take my violation pictures. Again, any vehicle you tow, per our county laws, you have to have a picture of the vehicle in its parking violation, and you have to attach that picture to the receipt. Yes, sir, this should be a hit. Right here. All right, if you've made it this far through the video, thank you so, so much for watching. Without you guys, this channel would literally be nothing. This channel has grown insanely fast in the last month. I actually have been really slacking on making content. Uh, I had to move. I actually got hired at a new tow company, so my life's just been really hectic, but I have an insane amount of footage saved from doing my impounds that I have to make content with. So there's a lot of stuff coming, a lot of stuff in the works. Um, my channel has gotten something like a quarter of a million views in the last 30 days. I've gained like a thousand subscribers. So again, thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video. Please subscribe. Stay tuned. There's a lot coming and thank you guys so much. I'll see you at the next one.